Hello and welcome to Hey Team TV. So today we've got a different sort of day. Uh, one different part of today is that terrible thing is there. Got to say it though, before you start <laughs> going on about John Deere, I do like the overalls. Go like something. Yeah, just overalls at the end of the day. That's all they are, overalls. And before you all cry, it's just jokes. It's yeah, just, just jokes. jokes. Calm down. Calm down. It's Stop getting upset. Right. Anyway, it is absolutely pouring down with rain. One second. See? Pissing it down. So we're both going to be on our jobs. Uh, you're sorting out trailers and stuff. We're moving stuff around the yard. Odd job day. Got to look at a cattle trailer later on. See what's the matter with that. Apparently, we haven't got lights or anything. So, so he's going to sort that out. Sort that out. I'm going to grease up my telehandler because I am going to confess I haven't done it for at least two weeks. Months! Absolute months! Yeah. And what? just for everyone's... for you all to know, today I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like you, ever. That's good. And you can't do that because I said it first. Well, but they know I don't like you anyway. Well, I don't like you. Well, it's fine then, isn't it? Well, fine. Good. Good. Don't really care anymore then. Good. I love you. See you later, you do it around then. <laughs> Finally! Peace and quiet. Ah, oh, isn't that perfect? So, I'm going to be greasing up my load all, and basically... No, not on the last laugh, mate. I'm staying Will you make your mind up? No, it's my show. You bipolar? Might, might well be, actually. <laughs> <laughs> right, so, he left, he's back. Um, I was saying, I greased up the telehandler. Also, through greasing up the telehandler, I will be having the factory running behind me. And sort of multitasking. No, you're not seeing it. Not today. We'll speak about that at some point, but not right now. Um, so, busy ish day. Reckon? Busy ish day? Yeah, it's just a fanny in our own day, isn't it? Yeah. It's one of those sorts of days. But stuff that needs to be done. If you haven't yet done so, hit that subscribe. And give us a like. Let's get on with what we're going to do. Okay, so, everything's going on here. Finally got a grease gun and filled it up. Uh, as you can see, we like to use a red grease. For those of you that are going to say anyway, yes or no, or in the comments, blue grease is best. But here's what it is. Anyway, I'm going to start off with doing all the joints on the wheels and axles, and then work my way to the boom. So I tend to, I do tend to try and do this about once a week. Doesn't always happen, but definitely once every two weeks. Usually about four squirts on most things. Sometimes five if it's been hard getting it into the joint or through the nipple. And that's just my process. Also, now most of us don't. Know, so just because you see a grease nipple on top of fin, especially on axles and driving points. There's also one below. So I'm going to set you guys up and I'm going to do a whole bit of this at high speed in a second and then we'll chat again. Okay, so underneath is done. For those of you sort of want to know, and if I forgot one, I'm really sorry. Um, got a grease nipple on top of the pin, on the bottom of the pin, on um, the shaft. Also, the one on the bar on the steering arm, and then underneath both ends is one on the bearing for the drive shaft. So, they're all grease. Now, I'll let you guys go see how Adam's getting. So, first job is, I left the rake outside, so we'll put that back in the shed, because there's rain, so instead of that outside getting wet all the time, we'll put that back in the shed. 
so then she's all ready to go for next time and frees up a bit of space in the yard. So we'll hook her up, put her back in the shed, and that is that for a minute. And then we'll get on with some, well, have a little job. As you can see, the rake is now on. I'm not gonna bother putting any, any of the pipes or anything in it because we're only moving it to the shed. So stay like that, just put up in the air, put the stand up. Uh, get her in out of the way. I mean, a freeze I means a bloody big rake, really. It's a freeze up quite a bit in the yard. Do apologise about the wind because I'm on my phone, haven't got my GoPro on me with the mic and all that, so I have to bear with me on that one. But can help the wind. So we like, we'll move out and on to the next one. As you can see, we're in. I couldn't video it because I haven't got my mount or anything. But as you can see, it's quite tight in here, so I need all my concentration. And this little brain has a lot. So she's in, we'll get her off now. Um, there's a cattle trailer now, a uh, wiring problem. So we're gonna have a look at that and see what is wrong with that one. Rams are a bit slow as she's cold, but we'll get there. You know, bloody big rams on the back of these fast tracks. And when you fast, you don't use the fast track for a couple of days. She is a bit slow to begin with, but nothing, nothing to really worry about or you know do your head in or anything. See, she's just creeping there, but she'll warm up. She'll be fine. Right, and we are off, so we'll move the fast track now. Hello, Red. He's in here woofing at his own shadow. I've got to do the boom. So, I'll do the boom in two stages. I'll do the head stop when it's down uh, back near the ground, and I will do the boom now whilst it's up in the air. So something I try to do quite regularly is on all teleanders, not just JCB. JCB, I would like to say, like this bit of plastic down here, first I think it'd be better if it was like a metal plate, but obviously you have your reason. Um, because on a Merlot, it's a nice metal plate, you walk on, lie on. Um, but down here, you can cause a lot of heat, and obviously in hot summers, you don't think going up in smoke. Unfortunately for us, we are around hay and straw 365 days a year. So it is constantly building up all the time. So it's just like another opportunity to get this sort of cleaned out as well. And I don't know about everyone else, but I'm not the smallest person in the world. I haven't got the smallest shoulders. Why is there never, ever enough room on telehandlers to get around? Does anyone else have these problems? But once you clear most of it, you can push it around so it falls down. It's like a hole there. You can see my finger there. So, once you got rid of the chunkiest bit, <coughs> you can start pulling it all out and stuffing it down that hole where it will just fall out and fall. But I'm not going to tell you to suck it out. It's not going to be perfect. It's just going to be a bit better. 
that's that. Something I always like to make sure I do is just sort of squirt grease over the boot. Just like it'll move itself around, but it's better than it running dry, if that makes sense. So makes it a little bit messy for a second. Also it doesn't have it doesn't have to be much, but anywhere there's anything touching, just try to give a little bit of loop. See, there's this guard at the back protecting this oil chest, but just the side of it are another few greasing points that I've got to get at. Okay, now there's one grease nipple that I haven't really got to yet, which is the bottom of the main ram, which is all the way in there. But the grease kind of got is long enough for it. So I am going to do that later on because I can't leave where I am. So I will do that later on when everything's off and I can go get it. So you won't see that one on video. Plus the pain in the ass because you've got sort of thread, like I'm using a rigid end which is handy for filming because I can sort of lock it on and show what's going on. But the other one with the flexi end, which can reach in there, that one needs two hands. So I can't do that one at the moment. It's always a pain in the ass. It's only our finest. No matter how many different ways you leave everything, there's always another grease nipple in a different angle. So what I mean here is to do those, I need it close, right? Which is not how I've left it. To do that one, it could honestly do with being a bit lower to make this easier but I'm going to make the best of it so I don't have to do it. But, another but. Now to get to the one behind here, I've got to now tip the grab and also to get the one in there, I've got to tip the grab. So, oh, and the one in there I've got to the ground. So, I don't know why manufacturers can't, I don't know, put some greasing banks on these things because we're forever getting telehandler, move it around, change the angle, do this, do that, just to get things like in the right places, just to get the grease at them. Hi Adam! Hi Justin! How's it going? Crap! Okay, I'll go now. Right, so we've hooked the cattle trailer on. Just brought it down to the workshop. And just, I've done a look before, I've um, put it on camera to see what we are actually looking at. So this cattle trailer was borrowed and um, they left it in a field full of sheep really. And that's a big no-no, as everyone knows. And they've gone for all the wiring, basically. They've pulled all the wiring. They've um, broke number plate light at the back. Uh, they pulled all the wiring at the front here. Put a tube wiring up the back. So I've had, a, I've had a look and these were all pulled out and chewed. So first thing I did, like anything, put them all back together, all using new butt, um, butt connectors and um, to see how that goes, see what we got. So we've done that and 
there was nothing, still nothing. So I've got side lights, I've got no indicators, I've got no brake lights. So start looking a bit, you know, a bit more thorough, a bit more deeper into it. And basically they pulled all the wiring out of the, out of the junction boxes. So we've got a bit of a mess everywhere. So what I've decided to do, because I mean, I could waste a day on this, to be honest with you, not really getting anywhere. So what I've decided to do is we'll just get a trailer light, trailer board light. We'll knock the, the, knock the um, lights off the back, get all them out of the way. So we've got a nice flat surface to work with. And I'll put the trailer light on properly bolt it all on um because this cattle box isn't really used for a lot anyway to be honest with you so the trailer board is good enough for us and so i'll run all the i'll take the plug off it and i'll run all the wires up through the chassis properly to the front of the trailer and then you know it it'll last us for years to be honest with you i mean we, we don't hardly use it if we were using this day in day out moving cattle i mean i'd i'd go out all the hog put led lights on do all the wiring properly but we're not on the road that much of it and when we are it's only taking a couple of bullets to slaughter so that is good enough for what we wanted to do so that's the decision we've made so we'll get on now we'll take the lights and everything off and um, sort some wiring out and then we'll cut some wiring back tied everything up and then we'll wait for the trailer board to come tomorrow so that is my job for the afternoon i mean it's like it's about one o'clock now in the afternoon so that's my job i mean this would take me most of the afternoon now Right, as you can see, there's one number plate light, all the cap and everything's off. That one's complete, not that it matters anyway, because it's all coming off anyway. So that's the lights we're going to take off. Probably leave the, might leave the reflectors on, don't know. Um, I've started taking the caps off that side, so we'll just take them all off, cut all the wiring, uh, grind all the nuts off in behind, and um, well, that's it, really. And then we'll wait for the board to be here tomorrow. I might try and do something about this dent. These are quite easy to take off, really, to be honest. He just, he says, I just take them all off like that. I mean, I don't really care if I break anything because they're coming off. These haven't been off for ages. I just usually just flip back all the rubber. I mean, this is quite hard with one hand. Right, that one's off. We'll do the same with the other side. And Bob's your uncle. And Fanny's your aunt, so they say. Come in raining really hard now. To give you an idea what I'm doing. So I've stripped all the lights off now. So what we do now, we'll just cut, cut the bolts and all, everything off. So it just gives us a flat surface. And then ready for the um, trailer board. Oh, now it's absolutely peeing down. But it's always fun getting dripped on. But there you go. Back where the light um, board's now going to go. Don't know if you saw before. I forgot to video it before. Um, that was massively dented and pushed up. Whereas obviously hit something where it's ground, ground in. Um, so, big sledge. Some wood. And she's all straight again now. So we'll run the new light bar along the bottom, along the angle. So she's all nice and straight, bolt it all on, run the cable through, simple job. As you lot have seen, both of us have been doing stuff. Uh, yeah, greasing up, unfortunately, takes me ages, especially when the factory's going, because I have to keep jumping around jobs. Uh, so don't think that I spent all day doing it, it just takes a little while. Well, keep an eye on what you're doing now. Um, no, you stay where you are. Oh, you I don't trust my, you. can't see my face. What do you mean? Your, your face has suddenly got bigger because you're closer. There yeah, you but go. no one wants to see that ugly muck of a mug. <laughs> ugly muck? Yeah, I'm a bit like that. Right? <laughs> anyway, face trailer? Um, yeah, all done. I'm not fixing it, but because... Uh, <laughs> we don't want to talk about it, really. Have you been saying old golly gosh today? Uh, a few times, a few times. <laughs> As, you, as I said earlier in the video, this is why you don't leave trailers out with animals, Justin. Oh. If he's sworn at the camera and I haven't seen it yet, I really apologise. But, big, big lesson for everyone. Don't leave trailers with animals in the same fields. It's a big no-no. Kind of any machinery. Anything, because they rub, break, chew. Apart from cultivators. They don't seem to be able to do anything to a cultivator. No, they can't really do that, do they? No. They get a good scratch and cultivator, you know, ends up lasting but we got there 
So we're just waiting for a trailer board to arrive tomorrow, and that is it. Cool. Anyway, hope you enjoyed today. Uh, yes, it's been a little bit different. Yeah, it's a little bit of a well, mismatch, really, isn't it? It's just, just an odd job day. Yeah. Just what we get up to, really. So, unfortunately, we can't harvest when it's raining, but we've got other stuff being done. If you haven't yet done so, please hit subscribe, ring that bell. And if you'd like to see any more of myself and more so him, you can find us on Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, and I forgot. <laughs> you forgot one. Yeah. You phone going again. Instagram was the one he missed, just so you know. Yeah, Instagram, that's it. Misses again? Might have been. Was, wasn't it? No, it wasn't, I think. Yeah? It wasn't, it wasn't the missus at all. <laughs> Coming okay. from you, right then, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, one day we'll be sensible on camera, maybe. Okay. Anyway, without any further ado, thank you guys for watching. Hope you just enjoyed our sort of montage day. And we will see you next one. Cheers.